Ardmore Road is still closed. This is in both directions around Island or roundabout because of a building fire. There's no access from Mulgai or Bears Den or from the other side uh, from Fossil Park. Uh, the Clydeside Expressway, one lane closed here because of a broken down car at Hayburn Junction. If we move to Edinburgh, Pilrig Street is closed in both directions because of a building fire between Dryden Street and uh, Brighton Road, New Haven Road. Police are there and directing traffic. The A720 City Bypass has slow moving traffic westbound between Strayton Junction and Dreghorn Link. And in Fife, the A91 Cooper Road is busy in both directions. Quick reminder on the ferries, there's a revised service for Carl Max and Alex Sailings. No problems on the trains, but that BBC Radio Scotland track. Later tonight on BBC Radio Scotland, the key sessions at five past nine. Uh, Orkney's Chris Griever in New York's Jesse Mallon are Edith Bowman's guests. Half past four. Here's 92 to 95 FM. 810 medium wave and on digital. BBC Radio Scotland. That's time for news and sport for the Borders with Richard Gordon. Good afternoon. A senior councillor has expressed concern at the provision of affordable housing in the Borders and elsewhere across the country. Developers are currently obliged to ensure that 25% of any scheme is affordable or to pay a financial contribution towards affordable housing provision on another site. But Tweeddale councillor Stuart Bell believes demand is far outstripping supply. He says the issue has to be addressed. There needs to be a balance, uh, but my feeling at this moment in time is that the provisions that we have in terms of uh, requiring developer contributions to affordable housing uh, is inadequate. Now, there are some sites where it's, where it's adequate, but overall, across the borders and on a wider basis across the southeast of Scotland, I've got concerns about uh, the ability to build enough affordable housing. Well, for rent and for fear? Yes, that's a good point, Richard. It's across all categories. It's uh, it's affordable housing for rent, it's social housing, um, and uh, it's affordable housing for sale. A painter and decorator who forced an oncoming motorist to take evasive action after he overtook a car told Selfish Sheriff Court it was an error of judgment. Ian Burt pleaded guilty to a careless driving offence which happened on the A703 Peebles to Ledburn Road on the 16th of September. He thought he had enough space to carry out the manoeuvre near the end of a long straight, but that didn't prove to be the case. The 55-year-old from Edinburgh was fined £450 and his licence endorsed with five penalty points. A teenager from Newtown St Boswells who was found guilty of being in possession of three knives in Gallish Hills Town Centres been ordered to carry out 80 hours unpaid work at Selkirk Sheriff Court. 18-year-old Claudia James had claimed she'd forgotten the knives were in the rucksack she was carrying last April. The jury ruled it wasn't a reasonable excuse and found her guilty of being in possession of the three knives. Sheriff Kevin Drummond said if it suggested James intended to use the knives, he'd have treated the matter differently. Instead, he imposed a community payback order with the 80 hours of unpaid work being an alternative to a fine. The completion date for the new cafe and bridge at Walton Lodge Park in Hoyk has been pushed back from summer to autumn this year. The delay is because of what Scottish Borders Council describe as an extended procurement process. The Council say they'll issue as a more specific date after the award of the contract, which will be made in the coming weeks. Despite the delay, the local authorities say the cafe will be ready to open to customers ahead of the 2017 Easter holidays, alongside a new play park. The spring's scheduled start of work on the new outdoor classroom won't be affected. Football fans in the Borders are being given the chance to kiss bigotry goodbye as part of a new tour which highlights the positives of the beautiful game across Scotland. Campaign group Nil by Mouth have teamed up with Stockholm Football Club as part of a 10-day tour that will see the charity visit clubs and supporters groups across the country. The event will feature football quizzes, reading from author Daniel Gray, and selfie stalls encouraging fans to post images of what makes them love the game. Dave Scott's campaign director of Nil by Mouth. We're well, hoping as many people as possible will make their way to Selkirk. It's open to fans of all clubs um, you know, we've got a delegation coming from Gala Friday and Rovers so we've got uh, great rivals crossing crossing boundaries to come and compete uh, we've got the author and television presenter Daniel Gray reading from his book Smash followed up by a special football theme quiz we're also able to offer some like refreshments uh, a pint and a pie uh, and get people talking and laughing and enjoying the good parts of football giving home the message that football's a great thing and we can kiss pretty good goodbye and that event will take place at Selkirk's Yarrow Park Club Rooms at 6pm on Saturday Rugby Gala's last game in the Premiership against Curry will take place on Saturday the 27th of February. That's a week on Saturday. The club are battling to avoid having to play a relegation match against a team which finishes second in the National League. They know they need to get a win or a draw.
draw with a bonus point to climb above Stirling in the table for an eighth place finish. In a tough season for the Maroons, President Graham Lowe is confident Gala can pull the result out of the bag against Curry, who haven't lost in six games. We've got a massive amount of bonus points that we've not been, you know, we've been in amongst the sort of games most of the times, um, but just you know, just it hasn't gone our way. But I'm a super optimist. That I, you know, I, I believe we can go to Curry and get the result we need. You know, the, 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 when it comes to club sides, you know, I think we've got a, a great club team there, and, and I'm confident that our guys will do very well when we go up to Curry. In rugby, Mel Rosenhoek to provide the Borders contingent in the Scotland Club International 15 to play England Counties next week in Gala Shields. Melrose backs Fraser Thompson and Sean Picker as joined by clubmate prop Nick Bevan, while striker standoff Lee Armstrong and hooker Ross Graham. Two other Melrose players, Jamie Batty and Neil Hervin, Irvin Hess, are on the bench for the match at Netherdale. That's on Friday, February the 26th. That's been a beautiful day outside, if uh, not a wee bit cold, of course, but uh, let's see what the weather has in store for us now. Here's Gillian Smart. A few showers will continue in the west this evening, dying out overnight. Temperatures will dip below freezing with a risk of icy patches. Tomorrow, a dry start, but rain preceded by snow on high ground will sweep across all parts through the morning and afternoon on strong to gale force winds, heaviest and most persistent in the west. A cold night will follow with wintry showers. And the outlook for Saturday, a windy day with sunny spells and blustery showers. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. And that's it for the moment. There will be more news from the borders at half past five. Do hope you can join me then. In the meantime, we will be rejoining the News Drive programme in just a moment or two. BBC Radio Scotland. I'm Bill Whiteford. It's crunch time for David Cameron in his efforts to secure backing for an EU reform deal. In the past half hour, he's begun talks with politicians in Brussels, hoping to secure backing that will persuade his own party and British voters to support staying in the EU. A referendum on membership could be held as early as June. The President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, says he's quite confident an agreement will be reached. But he says there are still things to be sorted out. Our correspondent Rob Watson is in Brussels. I think there's a pretty clear mood on both sides, and what I mean by both sides is the UK 